Okay, good afternoon. Uh, today we will continue our discussion still about the additional uh, component in Bernoulli uh, equation, which is now we already know about the friction uh, energy. So last time uh, we already discussed uh, about how to see the component of a uh, force that apply in a uh, flowing fluid inside the pipe. Now beside uh, the pressure from the force balance, we also add the friction uh, force to calculate the terms uh, shear stress or uh, friction stress. And from the friction stress, we know the correlation between uh, friction or shear stress with the pipe radius and the pressure drop along the pipe in axial uh, component. Okay, and how to uh, express the friction? Actually, we can express the friction in terms of friction energy. Yeah, by multiplying the friction force times length. So you have a uh, friction heat as energy and then also friction heat as friction heat rate so this one is friction heat rate and also you can express the friction heat rate per mass flow rate or we call it friction specific energy and uh, in our further discussion we will uh, calculate the Bernoulli equation mostly in specific energy form. So we use term small ef as friction heat specific energy. And from the derivation, we know the, uh, the, the correlation between uh, ef with uh, pressure drop, also with the shear stress along the wall. And uh, when we put into the equation, so please don't forget, that uh, friction you put it in the left side using the minus sign so will be equals like this right so this one minus in the left side so we take if we take the delta, delta is position two minus position one, you will get this correlation. Same later when we discuss about the uh, energy that we put into the fluid flow, which can uh, exist from uh, the pump or blower. If there is some additional energy into the system, then you put this one. But later, we will use this one when we already discuss about a uh, pump or uh, blower. So friction will reduce the total energy input and pump or blower will add the total energy in the input. Okay. Now, how to calculate the EF? Uh, basically, uh, if, we, if we use this equation, we need uh, if you want to calculate the friction uh, specific energy, then you need to know the value of the pipe uh, size. It means you need to know the value of the length of the pipe and diameter of the pipe. And you, know, uh, you need to know the uh, properties of the fluid in terms of fluid density from this equation. But you need also to know the value of shear stress at the wall, right? Pipe length, pipe diameters, fluid density is easy to uh, uh, to obtain. I means the value is there as long as you know the yeah the size of the pipe and also the type of the uh, the fluid. But to calculate the shear stress at the wall is something that's uh, difficult to obtain. So <clears throat> engineers correlate uh, shear stress into terms of friction factor. So friction factor is basically this one. 
So engineer correlate friction factor as the ratio of shear stress divided by density and velocity. So at certain velocity for certain fluid, it means certain density, there will be some uh, pattern in the shear stress. So by taking account the ratio between the shear stress, density and velocity, then we introduce the term friction factor. And the correlation between friction factor and EF become this one. FF is called tanning friction factor. Okay, this one. So basically, by using the friction factor, later we can uh, uh, we we will we will see how we can obtain the value of friction factor. But by converting the term shear stress into friction factor, actually you will simplify the equation. It becomes this one. So now, by calculate uh, how to calculate EF, it means you still need to know the value of the uh, pipe size, the lengths, and the diameters. You need to know the value of the pipe velocity, sorry, not pipe velocity, fluid velocity, and you need to obtain the value of friction factor. And later, friction factor will be influenced by Reynolds number. Okay. Sir, question, sir. Yep. Uh, the velocity inside the, what's it called, the fanning friction, is that this also the same as the velocity uh, in the one half u square thing, sir? The one outside the fanning friction. Is it the same? Yes, it's the same. All That's right. why the correlation will be, uh, it's derived from, sorry. From this one, this one, right? Then by deriving FF is uh, this one, tau wall divided by uh, half of density u square. Then you need to go back to this equation. Then you will have this one. Okay, so I understand. So. so, so the definition of the velocity here and here is the same. So, so that's if you do like this, it's become the initial equation, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the problem in the calculation is finding the value of friction factor. Uh, again, this one called fanning friction factor this one, but you see uh, you have FF here and you have value for here. So other people called Moody friction factor or uh, yeah, we call it uh, Moody friction factor. Define, actually it's the same. It's still friction factor, but this guy combine for and the fanning friction factor. So the equation, if you are using the Moody friction factor, the equation become this one. So basically uh, this one and this one is the same equation. It's just the value of the friction factor is different. The Moody friction factor is only four times fanning friction factor. Both are still function of Reynolds number, but later we will discuss it. Any question first about this one? Okay, if there is no question. Okay, for the laminar first, uh, 
you get this equation from our previous uh, slide, how to calculate the average velocity in the laminar flow. And then since the velocity will be the function of these parameters, Fanning found that for laminar flow, friction factor will be inversely proportional to the Reynolds number. Do you know the, do you still remember equation to calculate Reynolds number? How to calculate Reynolds number? It's density times, uh, times the diameter of the pipe times, okay. times uh, the fluid linear velocity. Linear velocity divided by? Viscosity. Viscosity, yes, correct. So basically, for laminar flow, the friction factor is only a function of Reynolds number and it's inversely proportional. Fanning found that the friction factor will be 16 divided by the Reynolds number. From where? From this one. From this equation, you get function of uh, velocity as a function of this one, right? And you will have that uh, from this one, from previous equation, from this one. So combining this equation and then uh, this equation, so replacing the shear stress by delta P or this one. And then you use this equation. So for the laminar, fanning friction factor will be 16 over the Reynolds number. So inversely proportional with Reynolds number. And with the same definition, Moody friction factor will be 64 divided by the Reynolds number. So the equation to calculate uh, fanning uh, to calculate the friction factor for laminar flow is quite uh, straightforward. Okay, for laminar is only function of the Reynolds number. How about for the turbulent? The experiment done by the Nikordasa at this year found out that for the turbulent flow, because in turbulence the velocity is more significant compared to the viscosity, then for the turbulent flow beside Reynolds number, there is other parameters that also influence the friction. It's called the pipe surface roughness. It's called epsilon. So for the turbulent friction factor is become the function of still function of Reynolds number, but also the function of it's called relative pipe surface roughness. It's the surface roughness, the surface heat, the epsilon divided by the diameter. This is for the turbulent flow. For the turbulent flow, Reynolds number is still important, but the, the condition inside the pipe, the roughness inside the pipe is also important parameters. And Nikurdasa combine these two parameters. Sir, what's the second F, sir? Sorry? What's the second F in uh, oh, this one? Yeah, function of the Reynolds number. It means this one is friction factor. So for the turbulent flow, friction factor will be function of, it will be depending on Reynolds number, but not only Reynolds number, but also epsilon over D. Epsilon over D is relative pipe surface roughness. So it's just a symbol to, to highlight that friction factor will be depending on Reynolds number and surface toughness. Okay, should be clear enough, right? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. Then how to cal calculate for the turbulent uh, flow? Basically, there are some, uh, you call, you know empirical equation or empirical model. What is empirical model? 
Have you heard this term before? The simplest model, sir. It's not always simplest. These are empirical models, and it's not simple, right? What do you mean by simple model? No, sir, it doesn't look simple, sir. <laughs> sorry, sorry? It doesn't look simple at all, sir. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But it's all empirical models. But you heard, but you have heard about the empirical models, right? Or empirical equation. I think so, sir, but I don't know what it means. <laughs> do you know the anonym? Lawannya atau sih? What is the anonym of empirical model? What types of model? Have you heard this term? Maybe in MATEC or in other class? Okay, basically empirical model by the name, uh, maybe it's the 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 ideal one the ideal one will be the mechanistic model mechanistic model is that model or the equation that we derive if we know the mechanism what kind of mechanism sometimes is the mechanism of the reaction reaction mechanism or maybe the mechanism of the phenomena so if you know the mechanism of the phenomena or mechanism of reaction then you can derive model. Models mean equation, right? Uh, usually it is derived from the mass balance or energy balance or other types of balance. Then you can uh, derive the equation or the models. The benefit of mechanistic models, since you know exactly the mechanism or you know exactly the phenomena, then the model that you derive will be or can be applicable to all of the phenomena. However, the disadvantage is you need to know the phenomena. You need to understand the mechanism. Then mostly the mechanistic model will be very, very complex because uh, especially if the phenomena is also complex. In first is what we call empirical model. Empirical model, in empirical model, we do not know the exact phenomena. We do not know the exact uh, mechanism or the reaction, but we, we only know those parameters or those models is influenced by what other, what types of parameters. So the empirical model is basically, you correlate one parameters as a function of other parameters, but you do not know how those uh, parameters will influence the calculation. So you just put the parameters, parameters, and then you take the data, and then you do some fitting. You know the name fitting in computational uh, process? Maybe you already heard this term. Sudah pernah dengar the term fitting? Fitting the one that when you put two pipes together, right, sir? Oh, that's different. That's that's another terms of fitting. Yeah, that's correct. Fitting is uh, the one. It's a thing that to connect two different sides of the pipe. But it's uh, it's a like uh, it's uh, you call model fitting. It's like cloth fitting. What do you do by cloth fitting? Ngacocokin the clothes with your badan, sir. That's why. That's correct. So basically, the model fitting is you mencocokkan, you, you mencocokkan apa bahasa Inggrisnya? You, you make sure that the parameters, the model that you uh, derive or the model that you write is uh, correlate with the data. Jadi dicocok-cocokkan. So it's correlate, then you get the value like the constant, the order, for example like if you want to, to, to know the, the function of A as B and C or D, then maybe you just need to K, sorry, B and then C, like this one. So you, you, you 
take the value, you variate the value of B, C, and D, and then you take the value of A, and then you do the fitting. Then you get the constant and the pangkat, the order. That's what you call empirical model. In some way, it will be simpler than a mechanistic model. That's why you said that empirical model is the simplest model. Compared to mechanistic, maybe yes, it's still simpler. But the drawbacks or the disadvantage of the empirical model, uh, since we do not know the real phenomena, we do not know the real, ex uh, the real mechanism, then empirical model cannot be applied to all phenomena, to all cases difference from the mechanistic model. That's why uh, some uh, researcher or some uh, guys doing some experiment and then find out, like for Prento, uh, he uh, got the equation to correlate the friction factor in terms of Moody or in terms of Henning as a function of Reynolds number and function of friction factor itself. So it's like the iteration. For the smooth pipe, because epsilon is very, very low, so epsilon per D is very, very low as well. And uh, the, 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 the effect of the surface roughness will be very low. It's not significant. But for very high, uh, but it's only applied for smooth pipe. But for, uh, for very high uh, Reynolds number, others, uh, researcher, Found out friction factor as a function of this one and this one. It means at the very high Reynolds number, friction factor is only depending by depending on the surface roughness for very high Reynolds number. So the value of Reynolds number is not um, important anymore. So this is some other, other, other types of empirical equation. And uh, Kulbrook and White try to combine. And by doing some experiment as well, we found out the correlation between the friction factor, Reynolds number, and epsilon over D. However, Kulbrook and White still write this one, right? So you have friction factor in the left side, but all you also have a friction factor on the right side. It means what? In computational, it means how to solve this equation. If you see a equation like this, do you, uh, can you imagine how to solve, how to get the value of this one? Put in all the numbers inside the calculator, sir. <laughs> then you will get, uh, do you, will you get the results uh, straightforwardly? Because you still have this one. This one and this one. So you still have to attack attack with the equations, sir. Yeah, uh, that's you call it what? Iteration, right? The trial error iteration. First, of course, the by knowing the Reynolds number and then epsilon over d, you can put into this equation. But how about the friction factor? Then you put value here. You put value, then you calculate using this equation, you get the value of friction factor in the left side, right? If it's not the same as the previous friction factor that you put on the right side, it means you need to use the new number into the right side equation. Then you do the iteration until you get convergent value between friction factor on the left and friction factor on the right. Sir, initially for the friction factor, for like your first trial, do you use friction factor equals to zero or do you use like the Nicker-Day's equation or something? 
Uh, no, uh, you just guess the number, but you need to know the range of the friction factor. How would you, you know cannot, that, sir? You cannot use zero, of course, because the root of zero is not, uh, you cannot get the value, right? The root of zero. Yes, sir. Okay. So the friction factor should be actually between zero and uh, one. The value should be zero and one. So you can put the number uh, as long as it's above zero and below one. Then you do the iteration. Okay, before we continue about the friction factor, uh, this table is basically showing you the differences of uh, surface toughness. In terms of head roughness, right? So this one, you can see different types of pipe. This is commercial pipe. The materials of uh, commercial pipe, like concrete, you will have certain value. Like rusted steel or stainless steel, uh, you will have a certain value. So this, this type of the pipe material will influence the friction factor. Maybe you can sense, right? If the surface roughness of type is high or higher, how about the friction factor? How about the friction energy? Because from be higher as well, sir? Yes, correct. So the higher the surface roughness, it will increase the friction factor and it will so increase the friction energy. It means in rougher, the rougher surface, the loss of energy due to friction will be higher. Okay, so because in Fulbrook and what equation is quite uh, complex, you need to do some iteration. Fulbrook and white basically do some graph representation. Okay, this graph representation, the Reynolds number is correlating with friction factor. Okay. Then uh, you can see there are two parts, right? So the left part is for the laminar flow. The laminar flow, the correlation between friction factor and Reynolds number is linear and in the slanted line. So it means it's inversely <coughs> proportional with the friction factor. What is the equation of the line? This is fanning friction factor. So this one will be 16 over Reynolds number from our previous uh, slide. But if in other types of graphs, you see the this one is not fanning, but you see is moody, Prison factor, then please remember that the equation will be this one. And if you already use Moody friction factor, go back to this equation. If you already use Moody friction factor, then this one you should use. But for this one, you should use for. What is the difference? Just four, right? The equation is totally the same, but in Moody equation, to calculate EF, you do not need to multiply again with four. It's already included in the friction factor calculation. Okay, yeah? so please be careful when you read the graph. Make sure whether it's fanning diagram or moody diagram. So for this one, this is fanning. So this one, 
from the laminar area, you can see that it's completely inversely proportional to Reynolds number. How about in the turbulent area? This is the turbulent area. And you have several lines. The line is actually differences in epsilon over d. You have several values. The lowest one is smooth pipe. Smooth pipe means it has the lowest value of surface toughness, and uh, the line actually uh, makin ke atas to the top. It's a higher surface toughness. So what can we see from the graph in the turbulent area? What is the trend of the line? How is the trend of the line? As it goes up, it plateaus faster, sir. So again? So as it goes up, it became like horizontal faster you know okay what does it mean when the line reached horizontal the trend is the same right when the reynolds number is higher reynolds number is higher is over there how about the friction factor value is increasing or decreasing increasing sir. increasing increasing yeah. if the reynolds number is higher to the right the friction factor is this is the friction factor this is the Reynolds number oh, so it in, in decreasing sir decreasing yeah. it's decreasing because the line is uh, lower right it means friction factor for the same surface roughness friction factor is also inversely not inversely uh, it's inversely uh, proportional to the Reynolds number so it's uh, lower until certain value of Reynolds number, the line become horizontal. What does it mean if it's become horizontal? The maximum amount of friction that is absorbed by the liquid, sir. The maximum? The minimum. <laughs> the minimum, I think. Uh, the value is actually the minimum but actually the physical meaning of that in horizontal area what is the correlation between friction factor and reynolds number first when you increase the reynolds number you increase the velocity right with assuming the fluid is the same the pipe size is the same so the viscosity also the same so it means the if you increase the Reynolds number, the parameter that increase is fluid velocity. So when you increase fluid velocity, you increase Reynolds number, the friction is decreasing. Until certain velocity, when you increase again the velocity, there will be no change in friction factor. Correct, right? So in the horizontal line uh, area, it means there is no more uh, influence of Reynolds number to the friction factor. It becomes constant. Although you increase the velocity or you increase the Reynolds number, the friction factor value is constant. That's what it means, right? Horizontal means constant friction factor value. Can be understood, right? Or do you still have any question? How about the differences in epsilon over d? The higher epsilon over d, the friction factor is higher. Higher. Okay. So for the smooth pipe, it will be the lowest friction factor for the same Reynolds number. But if you increase or you change the pipe with increasing surface toughness, you will have higher friction factor. However, for more surface roughness, the constant area of friction factor reach faster, right? If you compare uh, all the lines, you see that for this one, the horizontal area is already reached at this point. But for this one, the horizontal area reached this point. 
for this one, this point. So the the uh, for more uh, surface roughness, for more uh, rougher uh, for rougher uh, surface pipe, then the effect of Reynolds number will be less significant. But still, friction factor or it means friction loss in uh, higher surface roughness is also higher. Okay, any question first? Okay, I conclude that yeah. for laminar, it will be truly inversely proportional to the Reynolds number because you have this equation. For the Reynolds number, it will be decreasing as the Reynolds number is increasing, but until certain position of Reynolds number, then the effect of Reynolds number uh, is gone. So the friction factor becomes constant. Of course, for higher surface roughness, you will have higher friction factor value. Is it clear enough or do you need more clarification? It's clear, sir. Okay. So I'll continue. Uh, basically, it's the same. How about the, this one is what? This is laminar, this is turbulent, this is turbulent, and this one is transition zone. Right? For transition zone, sometimes you cannot find the graph. So like for some, uh, for this one, you still can get, but if you cannot get the value of friction factor in the certain uh, Reynolds number, then mau tidak mau, mau tidak mau apa? Uh, you need to use this full group and white equation. Then you need to take initial guess of friction factor. You need to take the initial guess of friction factor, put it in the, into the equation together with Reynolds number and epsilon over D. Then you have first result of friction factor. If it's not the same as the first uh, initial guess, then you take this result as the second guess you do the iteration hopefully you do not need to do that but you can take the value of from the graph okay i remind you again then for the reynolds number this one that this one should be inside diameter Okay. First, it should be the value of inside diameters. And how to get the value of inside diameters? You need to know from the table of schedule number. So you use the value of inside diameters. Besides, you need to know how full, please remember again, the concept of equivalent or hydraulic diameters. Which is four times this one. Which is, do you still remember the formula? What is the. Uh, is it the DE equals to 4RH then? Yeah, this one. What is the, In which, uh, what is the formula of RH? RH is cross sectional area of the liquid divided by weighted perimeter. Sir. Yes. So this is the cross-sectional of liquid, not of the pipe. Yes, sir. Divided by weighted parameters. Okay, but still you need to know the value of inside diameter of the pipe to calculate the Reynolds number. Okay. Any question first? If there is no question, then I'll continue. Suppose you have uh, this arrangement of pipe. This is a uh, fluid flowing from position one into position two. Uh, 
uh, with different height. So flowing from velocity one, pressure P1, and height zero. And at the end point will be P2, P2, and G2. U is uh, velocity, linear velocity, P is the pressure, and Z is the height. Since you have constant diameters, throughout the pipe, so the pipe doesn't change the cross-sectional area, it means you can assume that U is constant, right? So you can calculate the value of volumetric flow rate. Become this formula. So this is the volumetric flow rate. The unit is cubic meters per second if you need uh, if you know the value of the velocity then you choose to this um, formula okay so for this one velocity is constant and then the diameters is constant so the head will be different because the position is different and pressure will also be different. So the variables that you need to consider or you need to know first is the volumetric flow rate. How to calculate the volumetric flow rate? You can calculate the volumetric flow rate if you know the value of the diameter and the velocity. Okay, and then by using the Bernoulli plus friction, then you will have the value of pressure. Okay. Now I put the uh, the Bernoulli equation is this one. This is uh, between position one and position two. Okay. From this equation. Are you still confused? EF is now is on the right, so the sign will be plus. And then, since the pipe is have constant diameter, then velocity is also constant. Then, from the formula of EF, you have this equation. Okay, then from the Bernoulli, you rearrange, you have this equation. Tinggal dibalik saja ya. How to correlate the pressure at point 1 and point 2, the differences of pressure at point 1 and point 2 as a function of EF and H. Until this point, do you have any question? The velocity is cancel out. Okay, P1 minus P2, we call it minus delta F. To show that the pressure is decreasing from inlet to outlet. So pressure, uh, the outlet pressure will be lower than inlet pressure. Then from this equation, you get this one. Sir? Yep. P2 is outlet, right? P2 is outlet, yes. And you said that outlet is lower than inlet, sir? The pressure? Yes. So why is it negative then, sir, if it's lower than P1, sir? Oh, uh, the value is positive, but minus delta P showing that the pressure is decreasing. Because okay. the delta, normally, when you take delta, it's condition outlet minus uh, inlet. So by using this definition only, then if you take P1, P in left minus P outlet, then it will be minus delta. 
just to show the 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 sign doesn't mean anything actually so it's just showing that it will be the inverse of definition of the delta that we normally use because we use normally for delta is condition at the outlet minus condition in the inlet okay sir i understand sir. okay okay so just don't be confused but uh do not directly memorize the equation but you know the derivation right so from this one actually you can get this equation same just uh, move around the parameters and then from this bernoulli derivation you can get the value of velocity you can calculate the velocity as long as you know the size of the pipe the diameters the length and then the properties of the liquid the density and then the pressure difference the heat difference and the friction factor if you know the value of the velocity and you want to calculate the value of the volumetric flow rate then you just multiply by the cross sectional area or if you already know the value of the velocity or the volumetric flow rate then you can calculate the size of the diameters so it will be depending on what kind of information that you need to know or you need to uh, basically calculating the calculating the velocity or calculating the volumetric flow rate or maybe calculating the pipe diameters is uh, example of uh, fluid mechanics uh, engineering requirement right so it's part of uh, designing uh, fluid flow system so for certain types of pipe certain diameters certain length and certain condition certain pressure then you can calculate uh, at what velocity that the fluid can flow to sustain those uh, pressure those kind of pipe or inversely if you already know the if you already know the velocity of the liquid then uh, you can design how big is the pipe how much is the size of the diameters basically that's the meaning of all this equation but still uh, i advise you again do not uh, memorize the final equation you know the this equation comes from this full bernoulli uh, derivation Okay, any question until this part? Itu mah cuma di otak atik ya, sir. Kayak how do you find the uh, volumetric flow rate? Then from the volumetric flow rate, yep. how do you yeah get the D? Yep. As long okay. as the, the value of the parameters on the right side is fully uh, obtained, then you can calculate the parameters on the left side. Basically, it's that. Okay, thank you, sir. The one that you need to uh don't don't make mistakes when you are putting the value of uh when you're putting the ef because sometimes you need to put it on the left sometimes you need to put it on the right okay okay i think uh should be enough for now we will discuss the exercise uh next week do you have any question for Thursday, since uh, we will have exam on Saturday night, so you have a date with the fluid mechanic class on Saturday night. We will not have class on Thursday. Okay, sir. Yeah. But if we have question, if we have questions, we'll attend to you through WhatsApp, sir. Yes, sir. Of course. All right. Or do you need me to open the class? So you want to discuss some question? Oh, or let's, uh, you can discuss among yourself first and let me know later, okay? All right, sir. Okay. I will contact you through WhatsApp, yeah, sir, if you follow me say Jadi at Thursday, Thursday morning. Okay, okay. All right. Okay, so uh, thank you. Uh, we'll uh, see you again at uh, Tuesday next week.
Thank you very much and good afternoon. Thank you very much, Baba.